In this game, Mikhail Tal sacrificed the rook to start an attack on the king side. However, his opponent Janos Flesh defended very well, and it seemed that Tal's attack failed while Flesh was still up a rook. And then Tal's magic began. He made a mysterious quiet move, which at first sight didn't contribute to the attack at all. However, it turned out that the mysterious move actually started the second wave of the attack and earned Tal the brilliancy prize. Tal started with e4, and Flesh played the Karo Khan defense. Knight c3, d takes e, knight takes e4, knight d7, knight f3, knight f6, offering the exchange of the knights. Tal avoids the exchange, knight g3. e6, bishop d3, c5, attacking the center, c3, reinforcing the center. c takes d, knight takes d4, bishop c5, attacking the knight, and black is going to exchange on d4, after which white will get the isolated pawn. Tal castles kingside and bishop takes d4 followed, c takes d and now white has the isolated pawn, which has its advantages and drawbacks. On the one hand, the pawn is weak because white uh, cannot defend it with the other pawns and also black gets a great blockading square on d5 and the knight would be greatly placed on this square. On the other hand, the pawn controls the very important central squares. Black castles kingside and Tal pins the knight, bishop g5, and provokes black to play h6, which weakens the king side a little bit. And bishop retreats to f4. Knight b6, of course, the knight is heading to d5, and Tal plays bishop c2, vacating the d3 square for the queen in order to create the bishop and queen battery, creating the very unpleasant threats on h7. So after that, white is going to play bishop e5, and attack the only defender of h7, namely the knight. And after the elimination of the defender, white can simply checkmate on h7. Of course, uh, black didn't let white do it by playing knight d5, attacking the bishop. And after bishop e5, it turns out that if white eliminates the defender of h7, the second knight will replace it and h7 will still be defended. Black played queen b6 and Tal continues playing straightforwardly. Queen d3, creating his battery. However, that runs into knight b4, attacking both the queen and the bishop. And after the queen retreats, of course, black can eliminate the mm, very dangerous bishop. However, knight b4 also has its drawbacks, namely the knight on d5 was defending the f6 knight. And now, in case white captures on f6, black won't be able to capture with the knight. And the only way black can recapture is by the pawn, which will um, damage the pawn structure on the king side. And the h6 pawn after g takes f will fall. The queen from d2 will simply capture it, followed by knight h5, and white will create deadly threats on g7. And black, if black wants to uh, avoid this, to prevent bishop takes f6 and plays knight d5, for example, that would be a terrible blunder. Because, as you see after this, all black pieces would be placed on the queen side. And the king would be all alone. And white will simply demolish the king side and checkmate in a few moves. After knight h5 check, followed by queen takes h6 and checkmate on g7. That's why, after queen d2, Black simply eliminated the valuable, the dangerous bishop, and also attacking the rook on a1. However, Tal had in mind the rook sacrifice in order to start a very strong attack on the king side. Of course, Tal didn't capture the knight. Instead, he eliminated the main defender of the king side. Bishop takes f6. And it turns out that black, of course, cannot capture the bishop because of simple queen takes h6, followed by knight h5, creating deadly threats on g7, and also knight takes f6 would also be checkmate. That's why black is forced to accept the rook sacrifice. Knight takes a1. Now black is a rook up. However, as you see, the black pieces are on the queen side. The only piece that defends the king side is the rook. While white is attacking with the bishop, the knight and the queen. That means black is in trouble. And of course, Tal isn't interested in the material, in the useless knight on a1. He increases the pressure. 
knight h5, creating immediate threats. g7 is under attack. And if g7 falls, of course, h6 will also fall. And uh, the king would be simply checkmated. And, of course, black cannot capture the uh, bishop for this reason. Because of simple queen takes h6, followed by checkmate on g7. Neither can black play g5. Because of simple sacrifice, bishop takes g5. Completely destroying the king side. And if h takes g, of course, queen takes g5, followed by checkmate on g7. However, black found the best defensive resource, namely e5, opening both the light squared bishop's diagonal and the queen's way to the king side. Now the queen will take part in the defense of the king side. And Karl simply captures on e5. And now that the queen's way is open, to the king side now black plays g5 now the sacrifice on g5 doesn't work of course because after h takes g queen takes g5 check black can simply play queen g6 neither can white capture the knight if rook takes a1 then black would simply grab the initiative after bishop g4 the bishop's diagonal is open after e5 attacking the knight and the knight will be forced to retreat after which White's attack will fail, and black will grab the initiative by playing rook d8, attacking the queen. However, in this position, after g5, Tal found a very strong move. He played e6. That's the interference tactics. Now, if the bishop captures, the bishop will interfere with the queen, and the queen's way to g6 will be closed, and again, bishop takes g5 would work. Because now, after h takes g and queen takes g5 check, there is no queen g6 anymore, as the bishop is closing the queen's way, and that would be followed by queen g7 checkmate. Or, after e6, if the pawn captures, as you see currently the pawn controls the g6 square, but if the pawn captures on e6, the g6 square would be unguarded, and white can simply play queen d3, and the queen invades. Uh, and uh, black's position would uh, collapse. That's why after e6, black captured on uh, e6 with the queen. However, the queen interferes with the bishop. Now the bishop's development would be problematic because the queen is closing its diagonal. So, how to continue the attack? How to increase the pressure? If uh, white simply captures uh, the knight on a1 then black will play queen g4 attacking the knight and again the knight must retreat and that means uh, white's attack would fail so black would simply play queen f4 so offering the exchange of the queens which of course would be in black's favor and also attacking the bishop and after queen c3 uh, simply bishop e6 developing and black would be up an exchange of course white uh, would have some compensation but the position would be uh, unclear instead of this instead uh, of capturing the knight tal found something much more interesting you can pause the video and try to find his move i will just give you a small tip at first sight this move has nothing to do with the attack however actually it starts the second wave of the attack so that's a quiet pawn move tal plays h3 the idea is to take under control the g4 square because black was going to play queen g4 attacking the knight but after h3 it doesn't work and in case black attacks the knight for example after queen f5 and queen g6 if the knight is attacked white can always play g4 so by playing h3 tal ensured the strong position of the knight on h5 because the knight coordinates with the bishop very well and these pieces will keep uh, creating threats on the king side. And as you see, black doesn't have the dark squared bishop to defense the catastrophically weakened dark squares. So no, white will keep pressing. And uh, here, uh, black made a mistake. Tal in his annotations suggests in this position to play b6 uh, in order to fianchetto the bishop. In this case, um, probably the position would be more or less equal. However, instead of this, black played queen f5, which looks like a natural move. Black is going to uh, move the queen closer to the king side in order to defend the weakened king side. 
However, that move was a mistake. Tal finally eliminates the knight. Black develops the bishop and now rook e1. The rook returns and with tempo threatening rook e5, attacking the queen. And after the queen moves, retreats, the catastrophe on g5 would be inevitable. White would simply sacrifice the bishop on g5, followed by capturing uh, on g5 with the rook or the queen and that would be simply the end. That's why black played queen g6, so that rook e1 doesn't come with the attack of the queen. And also attacking the knight. And now we can see the idea of uh, another idea of h3, of course. Now g4 is possible and the knight is protected. So black is up an exchange. However, while white pieces are very active, very strong, creating very unpleasant threats, black rooks aren't doing anything. So finally black develops the rook. Rook c8. However, another strong move. Rook c bishop c3. And it turns out that now white is going to create another battery, another bishop and queen battery, this time on the dark squares. And also after bishop c3, knight f6 check is uh, quite unpleasant. So black develops the second rook, rook d8. Queen e3. Now queen e5 is coming. Black played rook d3 attacking the queen and of course queen e5 threatening checkmate on h8. That's why black must return the exchange. Rook takes c3 and b takes c followed. Now at first sight the pawn on G h3 is hanging but black cannot capture it because the rook on d3 was controlling the d file and if it moves away then white simply plays rook d1 and deadly rook d8 check followed by checkmate on h8 is coming so that would have been uh, a mistake of course instead black plays king h7 but this move isn't better because of simple knight f6 check and the king must move right under the attack of the queen. Now the discovered check followed. Knight d5 check. The king moved to h7. But that move is losing on the spot. Knight e7 attacking the queen. And it turns out that after the queen moves away to g7 for example. Then the rook is unguarded. And there is a double attack. Rook e4 check. And the rook false. That's why after knight e7, Flesh resigned. And now I recommend watching a game in which Harry Pillsbury found a brilliant quiet move, which came like a thunderbolt from a clear sky. But first, like this video and subscribe, as it's really helpful for the channel growth.